Thanks for your interest in our products. This uh, video is specific to AviCAD, which has all our MetQ tools inside of it. Uh, feel free to check out uh, MetQ for AutoCAD as well, and BricsCAD. After you install, immediately AviCAD will start to load. Uh, just usually it takes uh, maybe 30 seconds or so to load first time. And then from here, you want to choose either the ribbon or the CAD Classic. Well, now the CAD Classic does not have uh, the large bar that runs across. A lot of people uh, prefer that when they're starting because they can visually see the, um, the commands. So I'm going to go ahead and choose that. For the diehard um, AutoCAD users, and you don't want the ribbon, uh, just go ahead and choose CAD Classic. And down here, don't show this message again so that the dialog doesn't reappear. So here I've got the ribbon installed, and as you can see, it's uh, put up there all the MetQ tools, which I'm going to be going over real briefly today. And then at the very top here, you have all your basic commands for CAD. As well, when you load in a new drawing, you're going to get this dialog. What this dialog is really informing you is that it's going to be using a default MetQ file with all the settings in it. Now in the future, if you go to the MetQ config area, you can uh, save your profile uh, to another drawing. For example, if you were doing like 3D work and you had all your MetQ settings for 3D, you could save those 3D settings along with the spec level that you were using and load those into a new drawing. And we have a tutorial about that I'll leave at the bottom of the video. So we're going to choose OK for this. Now I should mention you can switch workspaces. So if you click on the little uh, gear icon here, you could switch back to CAD Classic if you wanted to or choose some of these other workspaces as well. Now I should note that AviCAD is 90% of what AutoCAD is. So almost all the commands are going to be nearly identical. Again, there's a video that I have, I believe it's called 53 Common CAD Commands. Uh, as well, I'm going to leave a link at the bottom of this video for that, for the beginner users and even if you want to refresh on Common CAD Commands. The advantage of MetQ is it does most of the drawing for you, but you're still going to need to do basic things like plot, edit, erase, you know, move, copy, and all those other things which I cover in the uh, in the beginners video. So with the MetQ ribbon showing, I'm going to go ahead and click uh, Management and then I'm going to click MetQ Config. Now this is the dialog that I was referring to where you can import and export your configurations so you can actually save your MetQ uh, configurations uh, and then import them into new drawings if you want. But here you can change your layers, your fonts, and units, which I wanted to click on and show you. Um, so here you can switch over to metric or English units. And this dialog will allow you to turn off the warning when you open up a new drawing by clicking here. If you automatically want to set to the MetQ factory settings when you open up a new drawing. So I wanted to show you some examples of each of these modules. And before we do that, I always want to check down here to make sure I got my ortho turned on. If I'm working in 3D, I'll have polar turned on. And I also want to just briefly check to make sure that the snap settings are what I need. I have endpoint. Usually I'll have perpendicular and midpoint turned on. You want to keep these to a minimum choose OK and we're going to go ahead and load the ortho piping. You'll notice as well up here there's isometric and PNID and we got plumbing symbols, tanks and vessels here and then pumps. So let's highlight over these to see what they do. And uh, let's just create a simple 90 degree turn here. So here's where the insert points show up. You have these little yellow X's. Um, so I'm going to pick a point, look in the lower 
part of your window as well. Look near the cursor and it will tell you what to do next. So we're going to pick a point and we're going to come down two feet. I'm going to type in two feet as we're pointing cursor down and then we're going to go over two feet and then we're going to press enter. So we've created this 90 degree turn here. Now we can go back. We can uh, just press the enter key to reload the dialog since it was the last thing that was loaded by pressing enter always repeats the last command and let's go ahead and put a flange on here let's click on the flange and then choose draw here we can either enter a single flange if we did so we'd pick this one because again the insert point is here um, as well we could change the flange type to welding neck and we could draw a double flange if needed so let's go ahead and just pick this one and we pick the point and we're going to rotate that flange in so by just holding the scroll wheel down on my mouse I can kind of pan around and then just use the scroll wheel to zoom in and out. So that's the um, piping module. I'm not going to get too much into the other uh, utilities there. Uh, have a look at cadavenue.com forward slash basics. There's lots of examples in there depending on what kind of pipe you're doing. Uh, 3D, ISO, PNID, and so forth. So um, let's go on to the uh, ducting. So let's go ahead and erase this, type E, and then let's load the ducting. So again, we're using a uh, dialogue-driven system, uh, specifying the uh, width and height here, uh, the shape here, insulation, exterior, interior, both or none. Uh, we've got end connections so we can uh, specify different flanges here on different ends. Uh, let's go ahead and do that. And I'm uh, going to do a, a flat flange. We're going to do a 6x6 six six, uh, rectangular duct. And we're going to choose draw. So again, we're just looking at the command line, uh, typing in the distance that we need. Let's say 2 feet again for this one. And you can see it's put the uh, the duct in there for us. Now this uh, is a label if you zoom down real close and that label is super small and let me tell you why that is briefly. So in MetQ all the dimensions and text are sized based on what's called a dim scale and if we type in dim scale uh, we can press 12 for example uh, now 12 would be more for a um, half inch drawing. Again, I have a video on dim scale uh, you can see below. Now, if I were to redraw this duct again, so let's go ahead and erase it and redo that. Again, at the very end of the run, I'm pressing enter to complete the input. Uh, so now we have a 6x6, 24 inches long. Now that setting can be turned off and on in the options menu. And it's right here. So some other things can be adjusted here as well. As well, if you wanted to draw this piece in 3D, you could do so there. So on the CAD Avenue 4 slash basics page, you can see an example of some ducting system inputs. Okay, so now let's go on to the structural. Again, you can hover over these to see what they are. But we have stairs, and we have frames, and plates, and gussets. Uh, let's go ahead and do the steel shapes in the example today. Now this is going to look a little bit like the piping dialog. We've got our fitting types up here. Um, so uh, you can choose between the uh, S shape and here we have the 
W shape, you can see all the specs down here of what you're going to be drawing. Um, so let's just draw this in real quick. Um, again, we could draw this in 3D if we want to. Um, let's go ahead and do that on this one. So we've got the W shape, then we just click the uh, view draw. And here, again, these are pick sensitive, so if it picked this one, uh, it's going to insert it from the middle. I'm going to pick a point here and a point here. It's asking me to roll it. Uh, I mean, you could roll it 90 degrees if you wanted to. I'm just going to press Enter. Now, if you come up here where it says top, uh, we can change the view to uh, southwest isometric, for example. And here you can see that shape that we've drawn in. We can also shade that using the shade command. So that's S-H-A-D-E. The same goes for the HVAC and the ortho. Uh, you can uh, use that same method where you go in and find the view and then shade the model uh, so you can see it a little bit better. Now Control Z will undo that so that we go back to a wireframe. So that's usually the easiest way to revert it back. So let's look next uh, at the uh, mechanical module. Now, here we have the uh, shafts, bearings, chamfers, keyways, and spur gears. And here we have the fasteners and the material handling. Let's just uh, do an example in the fasteners dialog. So let's do bolts and screws. Um, here we can do different views uh, for 2D, but let's choose 3D again for this one. And uh, we're just going to choose draw. It's asking us for the install point and the point direction. Uh, it's asking us for the length of the uh, screw. Let's type in 12. The thread length, we'll just choose 12 as well. Go into isometric and shade this. So I hope this has uh, been helpful. Just a quick rundown really of how MetQ works. Uh, again, have a look at our video section, uh, either catavenue.com or slash basics, or you can just head on over to the video link at the top of the page uh, that's at catavenue.com forward slash videos. And from there, you can continue on learning how to use MetQ. Uh, and for the most part, MetQ is very simple to use. It's just a matter of understanding really how it works and uh, getting used to uh, some of the um, dialogues. And then you should be good to go and on your way to becoming a lot more proficient getting your CAD drawings done. If you have any questions, feel free to call. The number here is 888-271-7121. And I hope you have a great day.